Well, hello, cuties. Guess what? It's your favorite host of a comedy advice podcast, Stefan Satani. Coming in a little chilly, because guess what? Those leaves have started to fall, and it is reeking of autumn. That's right. Mm. You can smell the pumpkin spice from your local Starbucks just coming into your neighborhood, permeating everything. Now my car seats smell like pumpkin spice, my hair. I hope you guys are having just the crispest of air and the sweetest of pumpkin in your foods and your beverages because I have a special fall treat, a little harvest. And in this harvest, I have reaped some fruits. One of those fruits is Hannah Burner, special guest, she was a reality star on Bravo's Summer House. She's also the hostess of the Burning in Hell podcast, where she brings on guests. I've had the pleasure of having a couple of them myself. She just had Ben Polizzi, who is a hilarious comedian and TikToker and Instagrammer, as well as he had, she had Pete Lee on there, who I also had, who is amazing. She's also had some amazing guests that I haven't had because she's better than me in a lot of different ways. So, you know, nothing against her except why, Hannah? Why? Why? Okay, that was an abrupt outburst. And I know you might be driving and I don't want to make you take any sudden turns out of your lane into the lane of the, the big old pickup truck, that F-350, because it'll crumple you. It'll flatten you like a pancake unless you are the F-350. Then, you know, just that's fine. And I can do as many abrupt outbursts as I can, but I'm going to keep it to a gentle breeze of breath. As I tell you that Hannah is an incredible person. We also, did I miss anything? Oh, she's got some tour dates. She's going to be in Tempe, Arizona, the 20th at the Tempe Improv. Link is going to be in the show notes. And for all of you guys that are outside of the Arizona state lines, boo. No, I'm kidding. Love y'all. Let me know if you guys are hailing from another state or another city and you want to say hi reach out in the dms comment be like hey what's up from cleveland and then i'll block you because i hate people from cleveland cleveland is it's the most boring area ever you probably look so average you're you look like your name is probably fred and you probably have a wife and one and a half kids and you like to go to wendy's for your special family night and so i'll block you that's just how I work because I judge people from where they're located. Um, no, I'm kidding. Cleveland. I love Cleveland. You guys are amazing. It's the Florida people you really got to worry about because that's the real trash, but just kidding, Florida. Wow. Look at me just blocking off every state, just one state at a time, shitting on all of them. No, just kidding. I will clench up and no more loaves will be pinched on any states. You guys are all remarkable. You guys are all just little angels wherever you come from. New Jersey, you guys are just like a fresh plate of Parmesan, chicken Parmesan. And, uh, you know, Oregon, you guys are like little droplets of rain that hit my face as I'm about to go in for a romantic kiss, as I'm dancing in the rain with my wife. California, you guys are like a beautiful cloud of pot smoke about to just blow right into me and get me nice and secondhand high. So every state has its, its preciousness, its advantages, and its beauty. And I'm here to relish that. And you guys are, are so diverse and so beautiful. And I hope that you guys can re-relish me. I hope we can relish each other. And if you want to catch up on this little hot dog that we're nibbling on together from each end. It's going to be like a lady in the tramp, except we've got our lips wrapped around one end of the dog, this kosher dog. You guys can subscribe, leave a review. I'm going to read a little review here from Apple Podcasts. And if you guys want to leave more, it's going to help with the algorithms and help rank me in a high way. And then I will become emperor of the comedy podcast. And then I'll just start bringing in the dough and I can go and tour and, and do live shows in Oregon and I'll bring my umbrella and, you know, Florida and I'll bring my cocaine and all those different places. And it'll be beautiful. This review right here from Apple podcasts, it says, Stefan looks like Jesus and sounds like sex with a virgin. Don't sleep on this honey glazed podcast. 
Love the episode with Eric Griffin. Well, thank you for that. Um, Sex with the Virgin. I think that's very quiet. If from my personal experience, I don't know about you guys, but um, thank you. Appreciate that. If you guys want to leave a review of the like, please do. Um, and thank you for all of you guys that have so far. We've got 200. So I want to I want to get that 300 level. And yeah, that's it. If you guys haven't, please follow, subscribe, leave a review and uh, hit me up on Instagram or YouTube or wherever. Leave a comment. And don't forget. I'm going to be at the House of Comedy. My new show, Trash or Treasure, episode two is coming out. Well, not coming out. It's a live show, but it's going to be October 19th. Link is going to be in the show notes. And we got greenlit for another one. Another one. You guys are incredible. I can't wait to embrace you with my words and just amplify your soul with the sound reverberating from my lips. So I'm going to leave you with past me talking with hannah don't forget to support her as well i i know you will because i love you guys i trust you i feel like you guys are definitely going to be home by midnight and there's no 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 funny business you guys definitely respect the curfew and uh, you're going to give me a little kiss on the cheek and be like mommy mommy staff i made it home safe and sound and i'll be like thank goodness thank you for checking in thank you so much guys and here's the episode hello Hello, Hannah. How are you doing on this fine evening? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me. Oh, thank you for being had. It's a <laughs> <laughs> I love the very minimalist background that you've got. <laughs> yeah, this is um, a beautiful lamp, and I just want to make sure everyone focuses on the lamp, and I don't want to distract it by any other decor, you know? <laughs> It is the PS de la Resistance. I thought it was yeah. a chef's hat that you could just <laughs> use for. I mean, we kind of have similar background walls. We're kind of vibing right now. That's true. Yeah, I can't afford all of the the sound panels, so I just have a couple on here. It just hits. That's the key amazing. Areas. I thought it was just art. <laughs> that was artistic choice. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, this is like an IOU for all the art that I want to put up on my uh, on my yeah. wall. So we'll see. Well, I like it. I like it. Oh well, th well, thank you, thank you. Um, <laughs> well, you are. On, by the way, Hannah, this is a comedy advice podcast where mm -hmm. we're going to talk a little bit about you, and then we're going to go ahead and give some advice. And um, amazing. It's it, absolutely incredible. And uh, it's uh, it's questions <laughs> that are coming from Reddit or from fans that send them in. So it'll be a, a jolly good time. But I don't know if you have any questions, if you um, need any more details. It's going to be good. But um, no, yeah. let's let's do it. All right. Hold on. I got to get into my um, <clears throat> my intro <laughs> voice. <laughs> Your I'm, normal voice was great, though, <laughs> like for podcasting prime time. Like thank you, thank chocolate. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. I might have to have a that as like a little blurb. Yeah, put a little quote, like chocolate. <laughs> like, like chocolate. This kid, this is actually I've been warming up. This is the radio voice. Normally, it's a little mm -hmm. more squeaky. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine? I don't think that that would. Um, no, I, I don't know if I have that look. I think. Mm -hmm. Well, I think I look like I'm homeless. So being in a place that has walls <laughs> is kind of kind of a plus. Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> hello, everybody, and welcome to a comedy advice podcast. My name is Stefan Satani, and joining me today, very, very special guest. She's a podcaster. She's been on reality TV. She's a stand-up comedian tour in the country. Everybody, please welcome Hannah Burner. Clap, Thank clap. you so much for having me. Clap, it's clap. privileged. Oh, it is an honor and a privilege on my side as well. Uh, Hannah, <laughs> first off, how are you doing? It looks like it's pretty dark. Are you in the East Coast time zone right now? Yeah, it's. I'm in a dark, depressive state. Um, no, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, what time is it? It's 8.37 p.m. I'm in the Lower East Side in um, an apartment. And um, I don't, I don't really have, whenever I podcast, I just find a cozy place on the couch I don't care what the angle of my face is. I, it, this is about just creativity through my voice. So let's fucking go. You, by the way, you had mentioned my voice pre-show. I think I'm going to keep that little yeah. bit in because it was very sweet. 
like chocolate. You should, well, you were like, oh, I'm going to, okay, I'm going to change my voice, my podcast voice. And I was like, don't, because this is working. This is working. Some people just have a, and I'm not saying you don't have a face for TV. I'm just saying you you have a pleasant voice. You have a pleasant, soothing voice because this would have been a long interview if it was screechy. You know what I mean? That That's very true. And I also, I want to pull over the shower nozzle towards your direction and give you a little bit of a compliment shower <laughs> where... <laughs> I feel like you, <laughs> you're not, you don't only have a great voice, but I feel like you're a great podcast host as well as guest. And I, I have to say, oh my God, I thank first, you. you're very welcome. You're like vanilla, if I, if I may. And so we're <laughs> going to have a swirl of a good time with this chocolate of vanilla, but. <laughs> People have told I, me my voice is calming, which is so funny because I have a mental health comedy podcast and I feel like comedy and talk about mental health is the least calming shit you can do. But people are like, oh, your voice is soothing. And I'm like, I'm glad someone's soothed by it. <laughs> it's not well, me. <laughs> it's so, but it's so nice to have a soothing voice. If, if you had a yeah. screechy voice that was like, I'm depressed, then that would be. <laughs> yeah. People are like, okay, little, stop a... complaining. <laughs> yeah. oh, but I also no. find when you have a nice voice, you can get you can get away with saying so many inappropriate things. You like with flirting, I could like be kind of mean, but I say it in a nice voice and people think I'm like hitting on them when I'm just being sarcastic or mean. So there yeah, it, there's pros and cons. Mm -hmm. It adds a layer of charm. It's like vanilla. You just have that sugar on it and you're just people yes. eat it right up. It's delicious. Yes. <laughs> And and it's I have pretty voice privilege. Pretty voice <laughs> That's what privilege. We'll call this P episode. <laughs> P <laughs> PVP. <laughs> I was gonna yeah, I was gonna say PVP. I don't know if that's an STD or not, but we're gonna it, it probably, make it yeah. cool. Who knows? Yeah. Anyway, well, yeah, we'll see what shows up in the search results with PVP. But but speaking <laughs> of PVP, you've you've definitely got a wonderful uh, V. Oh no, God. Okay, <laughs> reeling back, reeling, <laughs> reeling. <laughs> I didn't know which letter, and then it came out all wrong. All wrong. This <laughs> Great podcast start. has turned. <laughs> this, yeah, this has gone way wrong. I, I was going to say, I was first introduced to you when I was, uh, I had Mike Cannon as a guest, and I was doing some research, and I ended up going and getting engulfed by the flames of Burning in Hell, your great podcast about everybody's personal hell. And I was, you know, it was a little hot. Great voice, by the way, yeah. kept me in. Uh -huh. And uh -huh. and just the way that uh -huh. you're able to navigate and and talk, have fun, first off, and then also get into yeah. those deeper questions and, you know, make people cry, laugh, and just a whole <laughs> other variety, a bouquet of emotions, I feel like is very- Ooh, bouquet of emotions, I love that. I do feel like it's very interesting how people find you, like, who your connection was that got you them in a wormhole that they found you. But um, yeah, Burning in Hell is interesting because I started off with just my good friends who were comics. And that's pretty, yeah. it's not that it's easy, but it's like, you can go pretty deep and dark and they already trust you and you're learning new things, but it's different experience than when COVID happened. I occasionally was doing, well, Zoom is a little like less personal. So you have to butter people up in Zoom to be like, let's get vulnerable. And then yes. I start zooming with people I didn't even know that well. And then it's so it really is like almost a dexterous process of like making them comfortable enough to feel like they can open up about their demons while also like not making them be like, OK, bitch, like I'm not about to like tell you every insecurity <laughs> I've ever had. Like, I don't even know you. Like, I feel like we're on a conference call right now. Like, leave me alone. <laughs> so it definitely I have to be very present and like empathetic and also not pushy, but also make sure, like, cause people aren't gonna just, some comics do just wanna go on and complain about their demons. But if sure. you really wanna get to the good stuff, it's almost like a therapist where you have to know the right questions to ask. So I just like, I really love interviewing. It's a passion of mine and Burning in Hell has been like a great journey to do that with. That is so cool. And it's also, I wanted to talk about your stand-up journey as well, which mm -hmm. beyond asking questions, you're 
you're eliciting laughter from the crowd while you are just speaking and perhaps a little crowd work in between. But I was going to ask, which came first? Was it the podcasting or the comedy, the stand-up that came first? So the podcasting came first. It really started when I, okay, long story short, when I was in college, I played tennis and at the end of my tennis career, I did some sports broadcasting internships where I was in front of the camera and I would kind of interview the athletes and I learned how to edit and I would like write highlights. But I remember in my head being like, I'd love to be a sports broadcaster, but I want to go back to New York City where I'm from. I don't want to start a small market. And I just kind of left that dream to die. And then fast forward, Mm -hmm. taking like jobs in marketing and sales. One day I was just like, I miss being in front of the camera. And I'm not like trying to act like um, I'm a spiritual guru, but I believe in manifesting as in like, it's like, you know, after you break up with someone or they break up with you, everything reminds you of them because that's what's on your mind. I literally put like video on my mind. I was like, I want to do video. I want to entertain. And I started telling everyone and I was just, next thing I know, I got invited to do as a just a job tryout for a video producer for this funny millennial like female millennial company um called Betches mm-hmm. and they were looking for a video producer five years experience now you know your girl only has six months experience at the University of Wisconsin with sports but I submitted like a bunch one thing for people don't take jobs that you're qualified for second of all if you're not qualified for it and you have to prove to them you think you do good work I hate to say work for free, but I came in with like 60 video ideas and they could have sucked, but they were just like, okay, we like what you're doing. You have no experience, but we'll pay you like basically a stipend. And that was how I got on my next, like the right path. I knew that I was at least investing in like the career that I wanted to be in. I didn't know long-term what it was going to be, but I got into video and I got into making people laugh. And then from there, I was writing a lot. So I'm tweeting. I'm making memes. I called it Betch's boot camp. I was making like almost a hundred memes a week of just like the shit you see on Instagram. I was doing it for them. But then I started wow. realizing that like my own voice was kind of different. Like it was a little more goofy, a little dirtier, a little more mm-hmm. insecure than kind of like the cool girl vibe that they had. So that was like Uh my alter ego. And I started posting on my own Instagram and that stuff started to gain traction and other places started to post. I started to get my own voice. I started interviewing. I started doing well at this company. And that's when a reality TV show, Summer House, reached out. was like, do you want to do a reality TV show? I was at the point where I was in my life and I was like, fuck it. Like they could show what (laughs) I do during the day, like career wise. And then it shows kids like it just I was 26 single I was like let's fucking go but with that said I knew that I was gonna have a not a lot more viewers this is just how my mind was working I'm gonna have a lot more viewers yeah. to who I am and I don't mm-hmm, know how mm-hmm. they're gonna edit me on reality tv or how I'm gonna be portrayed so if people like me let's have them they can come to a podcast and that's how burning in hell kind of started so before I went on reality tv I started this podcast but it was based off of like after working at this company I met a lot of celebrities reality tv people actors musicians and I realized like they have all this stuff that everyone wants but they all have their own shit going on so that's where I got the Mm -hmm. idea of because I always thought when I was younger like is LeBron James way happier than everyone because he has the most money and he's so successful is that how life really is and then I yeah yeah I, I basically wanted to interview the people we look up to to find out like what their demons are. Either they're really good at coping with it or their demons actually make them good at what they do, but they're not happy. <laughs> or just that they're just like, which is a lot, that they're just like everyone else and we're all coping with the same stuff. I just wanted to pick people's yeah. brains and be like, am I the only crazy one here who struggles occasionally or more than occasionally? So, so my podcast starts burning in hell in november um the show airs i believe in march and then my podcast was doing really well and caroline's in new york city reached out and said would you like to do a live podcast and i was like cool and my friend michelle said to me 
you have to open with 10 minutes of stand up. And <laughs> here's the thing. I here's the thing. I don't know. People, this is such an interesting podcast too, because I feel like you must hear stories of there are people who have wanted to be a comedian since like they were born. There's someone who got yeah. inspired at a certain time. When I say I fell into it, like it really was like I was good at writing. I loved performing. I I liked being in front of a crowd. And I liked making people laugh. So it kind of just was like, if you're not going to do stand up, then what are you doing? Like, it just <laughs> was like what I had to do. But in the past, I actually had dated a stand up for a while. Um, oh, okay. Okay. Before I knew that I wanted to do stand up. Like, I was just uh... working at Betches and I was dating a stand up comic. And I fell in love with like the world, like the New York City community. I loved all the people and I just like fit in naturally to the. Yeah to the comedy energy and then mm -hmm. I broke up with him and then I guess it was like six months later I was like oh I can't do comedy that would mean like like he's gonna think I'm copying him and then a year later I was it was like um, I'm not gonna do comedy because there's one person in the world that might be like really you're doing comedy now right. so <laughs> and I feel like also a lot of people like sometimes you realize like oh I didn't love them maybe I just loved the, the I joke I'm like I mean, I, I loved everything about comedy, but I didn't know that I should right. ever do it. And I also was one of those people that was like, yeah, I'm like a funny friend in group text and I'm like the funny friend, but I, I'm good back and forth. Like I'm not good at giving a talk, like, <laughs> but you realize stand up is not a speech. It's a dance. Uh -huh. It's like a give and take. So um, long story short, I looked at all my tweets over the last like two years. <laughs> I'm just telling you exactly how I did it. No, I divided great. it it's into great. like, I divided it into like dating jokes. And also when I say jokes, these tweets, some of them were like a joke. Some were a premise, some were a punchline, mm -hmm. some were just, so some I expanded out, some I added as a punchline, but they all were good ideas. Had a whole yeah. thing about like, like farting. I had a whole thing about like nice. um, cuddling. So I, I, I realized I had certain subjects that I really liked talking about. And then I <laughs> nice. put 10 minutes together I practiced like in front of my friends. I didn't do any open mics or anything. So it was kind uh -huh, of last uh -huh. second. And the first time I did comedy was in front of, yeah, like 250 people at Caroline's, <laughs> like friends, family, <laughs> like a comics nightmare, but I didn't know it at the time. <laughs> like I was almost, <laughs> ignorance is bliss. Like my confidence was stupid. And to this day is still pretty stupid, but I don't question it. No, that's, that's, oh my God. I felt like you just opened up a box of Godiva chocolates <laughs> and they're your life. And you're like, that's this one. This is when I got a job with five years experience with only six months experience. And then this is when I did stand up. They're all so delicious. I don't know which one to pick and take a bite out of. Well, that's but, why I wanted to go in my little monologue to be like, where do you want to go with this? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I'm going to dig into the, uh, the, um, what is it? The, the uh, oh my gosh, I was just so tied up in the chocolate metaphor that I just forgot <laughs> which area. The, like caramel. Oh, the, yeah, the caramel and the manifesting ganache. It sounds delectable mm. to me. I also, mm. I've heard from a lot of people about manifesting and I've tried it a little bit myself and I'm starting to believe in it more and more. And I, I think yeah. also, I'm starting to believe in myself a little bit more and more and more. Cause I think that, and I've read a lot of different books about writing and especially about writing and comedy and creativity, et cetera. And mm -hmm. they talk about, we have a sensor that is like, that's dumb. Uh, don't write that. And mm -hmm. I don't know why it's like a puppet in this case, but no, you know, it, it, it's not you. It's a puppet in your brain. That's like, listen to all the things that like teachers or parents or like bullies have told you in the past. And they like, it's like the whispers. And sometimes whispers can be negative and sometimes they're positive, but you like, can't believe them all the time. Yes. Yes, exactly. And so I, you know, I, I've been able to learn from some of the greats like um, yourself and and other people <laughs> that have been on the podcast and that have talked about these different types of things. And it seems like you have been able to just jump into things. And I'm not saying fearless because it, it sounds like there might be some fear or not, but to the way you mm -hmm. described it, you just kind of jump into it. You went into that job, mm -hmm. gave your ideas. You went into 10 minutes of stand up and did a live show mm -hmm. at Caroline's using your yeah. tweets, which yeah. by the way, side note, tweets are fire. Your tweets. I, oh I remember God, thank one. You, thank you. <laughs> 
I've and by the way, I've, I'm too old to use. It's that like adjective. the nicest it's thing fire. people can say to me. No, like when someone says they love my tweet, like when someone's like they love me on Summer House, I'm like thank you, and someone's like they love my tweets, I'm like that is my soul that I've put on those words. But I've had there, so many stupid tweets. There was one that hey, you know what? That's totally fine. You need you need those sprinkles on those delicious yes. donuts of like the meaty, yes. the del- the the dough filled delicious tweets. You love one a of food them. Me- you love a food metaphor. It's about dinner time, <laughs> so I'm a little I'm a little hungry. So it's <laughs> just I can and like, smell the ribs. Do we need a ribs. food break? What's happening? <laughs> <laughs> just say it. If you need help, just say it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been I've been stuck on food lately. This is uh I smell the ribs that my wife is He's making. Like, so it's just chocolate. <laughs> oh yum. The reward after the pod. She's oh, like, be man. funny yep. or no ribs for you. That's oh, I was about to say the same thing because it's true. She's like, it's Hannah. Oh, I loved her on Summer House. You better do a good job with her. I was like, oh, okay, sweetie. Um <laughs> But anyway, your one one tweet really had me giggling, and it was around not trusting those influencers about aging cream. It oh, was yeah, uh, yeah. Um, I about forgot Paul who it was. Oh my god! Yes, Paul Paul There's Rudd. Because so- I j- go ahead. You can go ahead. Uh, no, everyone was posting this gorgeous photo of him, and my feed is full of like a lot of girls who are twenty three giving me their skincare routine, and I'm like, bitch. <laughs> You haven't even felt a hangover yet. So don't, I don't need to hear your stuff. And you probably have worked on too. Like, but Paul Rudd, I just want to, I want to know. I just want to know what he's up to, what he's doing. Even Betty White too. Give me some of your, I don't care what these 25 year olds are doing on Instagram. It doesn't help me at all. But I also, connecting Instagram and manifesting and influencers and beauty and stuff. A lot of stuff on TikTok and social media talks about manifestation, but they do it in such like a glamorous, annoying way where it actually makes me not want to do it. Like even when I brought it up to you, I was like, I was like insecure about it. Like, I know it sounds stupid, but I also Mm -hmm, hate mm -hmm. rules. So if someone's like, okay, this is how to manifest. You go in the mirror, you say the words, you put it in a post-it, put it... I don't like that stuff. I don't like those rules because I feel like if there were actual rules to follow, then everyone would do it and everything would happen the same. I really believe it in like a self-conscious way where all I did was just consciously decide what I wanted to do. Like just Mm -hmm. when you wake up in the morning, you know the dream you're chasing and it's not a half-assed thing. It's not like, well, maybe I could do... I mean... And it doesn't have to, like, I don't, I don't think you should have specific goals because I think it's actually limiting, but no, I knew I wanted to entertain and that was all I wanted. So when I was saying, I want to be in video, you're just telling everyone, I didn't have a magic notebook. I never wrote it down. I didn't have a song that I was singing in my head, walking down the street. It was just something that like, I owned it. Like, and they say the hardest thing in showbiz is like admitting that you want to be an actor, admitting that you want to be a comedian. I didn't even admit I wanted to be a stand-up. I've actually never said I want to be a stand-up, but I'm touring now. It's more that I knew that I wanted to entertain. I didn't know what shape or form. And I do think in this world, everything is changing and evolving so much. Being a stand-up nowadays is such a different job than it was 10 years ago. So it's just like knowing what brings you joy and the name of that could be anything, but you know what you want your purpose to be. Man, that's beautiful. Absolutely. <laughs> I was going to say delicious. I'm very passionate about it. I'm very passionate <laughs> about it. <laughs> that is so cool. And and obviously it shows because you, like you said, you're touring now, which is incredible across the, crun- mm. the, the country. Crunch. Um, <laughs> and, <hungry. laughs> yeah, oh God. And, um, and uh, I was going to say too, I, I had spoken with a guest, Ian Laura, and he was telling me he's Ian. a New York comedian. He's he's mm-hmm. absolutely delightful, splendid human mm-hmm. being. And he was telling mm-hmm. me sometimes about material where he's like, I usually, I try to test out the material in New York where if it's good in New York, it's bulletproof in other places mm. across the country. I wanted to ask if that has been true for you too, or if you've seen some places are a little harder or there's like different audiences that you have to cater to. Are there ones that are particularly giggly? Um, Oh, it's, it's so fascinating because like there's no actual rule book and you know that every comic has like a different way about it. 
what yeah. I, I, growing up as an athlete and as a tennis player, I always had like your home, um, like your home gym. Like I had my home courts that I practiced all week. And then on the weekends I traveled to tournaments. So for me, mm -hmm. like I play at the stand in New York, like with Ian. So that's like my home court. I play nice. there doing 15 minute sets all week. And then I'll go to a different place on the weekends. So yeah, it is that stand crowd that I work out mm -hmm. my stuff. But you also, it's funny because the stand has a patio outside, an upstairs indoors and a downstairs indoors. And the downstairs indoors is the hottest crowd. It's dark, ceilings are low. Your stuff does much better there. The patio, we joke like, don't try out new stuff there. Or if it doesn't go, like you just can't hear the laughs a lot. There's like a garage next door that like, there's pigeons that you're bombing in front of. There's families walking by. So mm -hmm. I've learned how to like, I've because also I I've just learned not to be too scared of material that like if it doesn't because I've had material do bad because I tried to close with a new joke I've had material do bad because it was overall just like not a great room so you just like can't mm -hmm, take it always mm -hmm. personal to the joke um and I've really kind of detached my ego from trying out new jokes and stuff so hmm. I know like when the vibe is right, when the laugh is right. It's almost like I immediately know if the joke is good or not when I try it the first time um, in the right situation. And it's wow. mostly a sandwich thing. Like you're sandwiching it into jokes that are good and you throw it in. Oh. And if their vibes stay the same, you're like, this is good. This is good. Um, so yeah, that's kind of my method is, is in the New York crowd. <laughs> <laughs> knowing that they're tough but knowing that if they give you something that it's gonna work um mm -hmm. but I do also have some bits that like as a touring comedian you find you start making jokes about touring like you mm -hmm. get to the point where you're like I did this joke in Kansas City and they didn't get it because they didn't quarantine or like I have a joke about how if you have exposed brick in your apartment I will fuck you and I did that joke in <laughs> And this is like a very New York thing. And I did that joke in LA and I joke that yeah. they're like, you mean a crack den? And I'm like, no, in New York, it's cool. So like, I'll kind of play off of how certain jokes work in certain oh. places and why people will not think. I did a whole bit about like FaceTime dating during quarantine. Uh -huh. and I tried it like in Indianapolis and they were like, no. And I was like, oh, I don't know how much you guys actually stayed in your houses or it just like depends on the vibes of the places, but they all laugh at it too. Cause we're just, we're figuring it out. But my base is that New York crowd. And then I, I honestly feel like other places are nicer. <laughs> other places are, people are, they want to laugh. New York is a little like, how are you going to make me laugh tonight? Where oh, other places God. are like, we're trying to have a good time on our beer. Just, that, just yes. put in a good effort and you'll get a good laugh. Yes, I am originally from Arizona, but then I moved to the tri-state area. I was working in Manhattan for about eight cool. years. So I was a little ray of sunshine that um, <laughs> just was completely I'm so sorry for what they did to you. <laughs> I remember I'm walking so on the street and I was, I'm from a small town. So I would wave and be like, hello. And people are like, nope. what the, f what is wrong no. with you? That, you could so get I reported to the police for doing that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, be, yeah. They they started walking away from me. They, they were getting closer. They were getting closer to the homeless guy that was singing yep. than to me because they were like a smile. That's disgusting. What are you doing? <laughs> so. Well, I also think that the New York audience is super distracted too. Like, there's so many fun things to do yes. and going on. Yes. And the friends were like, "So Ian's right. If you can get that crowd to like you, but I also have this. Um, I have kind of." two crowds that sometimes merge. I have some people who know me from my podcasts and mm -hmm. my stand up, And then I have people who just know me from Summer House. So some of those oh. people are not necessarily like a comedy crowd. So they don't yeah. always know like what to expect or like how it works. So I've yeah. been navigating that as well. And then sometimes people will be like, oh, do you think it's easy because it's like people who are fans of you? And it's always funny because I actually find the first couple minutes people are kind of just observing you because they're like, yeah, oh, yeah. this is her in the flesh. I hate saying that, but like the flesh, like it's her not on TV. Oh, Hannah in person. And they're not even like taking it in. And then like, not that I am of the stature of Jerry Seinfeld, but Jerry Seinfeld once said like, they'll give you 
the first, you know, 10 minutes as like, but if you're doing a 50 minute set, like you need to fucking bring it. So like at no point is your crowd just giving it to you, but they're always excited in the beginning to see you. And then, um, uh, maybe because my people don't even know me from stand up a lot of the time. So I'm kind of like, Oh, yeah. you like me from this. It's like watching your favorite football player play golf one day and you're like, oh, okay, we'll try this. So yes. I'm going on kind of oh. a rebrandification as some people would call it of my career where a lot of people had seen me on TV or from podcasting only. It reminded me of the first Space Jam where Michael Jordan had <laughs> retired from basketball and decided to try baseball and it did not bode well for him. And then- That's my favorite movie. Oh my God, like I still remember movie. the youthful tears coming, streaming down my face as, as R. Kelly. <laughs> well, fuck that guy. But... <laughs> oh God, do not, do not hold oh, up. All right. But no, I, I used to work out to the like, album. That shit was fire, the Monstars. But, yes. but what's funny with Jordan, he was playing baseball for his dad. It like wasn't what was meant for him. He was always meant for basketball. Yes. Where for me... I was doing reality TV just cause it kind of fell in my lap where like, it's not what was meant for me or like what brought me joy. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. like stand up and, and podcasting. That is what I really love and like hosting and stuff. So I'm, I'm learning in the entertainment industry, like what, what works for me, what doesn't, cause you're going to get different opportunities in different ways and yeah. you have yeah. to see kind of what fits. That's that's really cool. And also, I did want to say, I don't know if you're just giving off Jerry Seinfeld vibes, but I thought of that as well. well I think there was a documentary where he was trying out this new material and he was just bombing. Go, go mm -hmm. ahead. What were you going to say? Oh, no, I just love documentaries and I probably watched it. Oh, nice, nice. And he was very <laughs> frustrated. And it just made me think, yeah, I think he said what you said, too, it was where he was like, yeah, they'll give you the first laugh courtesy laugh mm -hmm. but then after that like you yes. gotta work for it so yes I, and also i get a lot of people after my shows who are like hey we loved you on summer house not gonna lie we didn't expect this to be like real stand-up and you blew us away and it's hard because people see social media <laughs> and they see like when you get tagged in a thing or when you're on tv but they don't see like every night you like bombing at a patio show <laughs> to like get you to where you are um oh my god i recently did a sh did a show but i didn't uh -huh. realize was in a conference room in a hotel and i had just watched a documentary on mid-level marketing schemes and i was like this i'm the president of a pyramid scheme and we're all gonna make a lot of money tonight so <laughs> it's, like, you, i'm still in this I, it's funny because in bravo land i got to a point like season three where i was like okay like we're getting kind of fancy here and but comedy i'm still on that grind where like you have i still have to have so many different experiences like i still just i'm like a sponge trying to like face every obstacle i can Oh, that's, that's so cool. The, um, I was going to ask, oh, I was going to ask about your material. I know that it's, you're a prolific creator and I know that you also, <laughs> you also, um, were engaged in the quarantine period. Yes. Well, maybe yeah. where in places where there were, was quarantine for all of our Nebraska <laughs> listeners, that's where we stayed in our house to prevent us to, from catching the sickness. But anyway, but uh, also some places you, was like Arizona was probably great to walk around like during the winter where you had like air, air just New York shit was shut down. Yeah. Arizona, at least we had, no we had, well, we also, yeah, we were, we, we were pretty naughty in terms of yeah. things were open. And I have friends that, in Florida. I heard, I heard about the scenes. Wild. Yeah, we were, we, we were, we were dirty little girls over here, but um, anyway, <laughs> the uh, congratulations to you on your engagement. And Thank you. To, Thank you. I was, I was going to ask. It fucked up um, my material. If you're going to ask. Yeah. It fucked up all my material. That was it. That was it. Because I know up. you had a lot of material around being single and dating and everything. And then well, yeah, the whole the, the whole rea the like the whole reality TV thing was like Hannah's single. Who's she gonna meet? She's drunk, she's partying. And yeah. I was I love just like observing and tweeting and podcasting about relationships and dating and weirdest yeah. dates and mistakes and advice and and being an empowering woman and sexual freedom. But, but that was my thing. And then I, I joke with my friend. I'm like, I don't date. I just one day got engaged. Like it was out of nowhere, truly, where I met a oh guy. I went on a reality show. 
I joke that I was like, just calling him crying all the time. Cause it's like a heightened social <laughs> experiment where like, I, I don't know why he was like, oh, this girl's marriage material. Cause I also am not like that. Like I'm not that emotional and crying all the time, but this show definitely will make a person do that. And then we moved mm-hmm. in together mm-hmm. and I joke that quarantine, you know, months are like dog years. So we got really close, really tight. And yeah. he's for- older, yeah. he's 45. And I guess he knew what he wanted he proposed and i was like let's fucking go but then i was like okay <laughs> is that how you I'd responded really hard. let's fucking go i'd work i yeah well at first i was like is this a bit like i thought we were kidding and now we're doing <laughs> okay well i started just like jokingly sending him rings and he was like he texted me back and said on it and then i was like i think he's joking i don't know and then it got real and i was like oh we're serious but that's what happens he's a comedian as well he's a comedian as well um, and, and a lovely yeah. comedian as well. And I, <laughs> I wanted to ask too, your first time meeting, your father dropped you off a little early mm-hmm. because he mm-hmm. had tea time. I, yeah, he had, a, he had a golf m- match, yeah. Oh, a golf yeah, match. Oh, I, I'm so sorry. I th- I thought I had heard tea time once. And, and I almost went to my first <laughs> debut of king. tea time. <laughs> <laughs> He is a British well, monarch. He had a well, tea time. <laughs> I, is that a th- is that a thing over there? Because I had just started seeing it pop up here in the Phoenix metropolitan area. Granted, we're a little slower when it comes to cultural um, phenomena. Do you mean tea but... time, like like golf tea times? No, and I just made that connection as I was speaking. So um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cause that's what it was. This motherfucker just had to play golf with his friends that he plays with every fucking day. And I told him a week in advance, I have my first date in six months. I haven't had sex in six months. And you've been asking me why I'm single and 29. Okay, I have a date. And my own father (laughs) was like, oh, I have a tea time at noon. So I'm gonna drop you off an hour early in the 90 degree heat. And I was like, are you fucking kidding me, dad? And we'd been quarantining with each other for a while at that point. I was just pissed, but it's weird. I think I also was, I think I also was anxious about the date and I might've been taking it out on him too. Like I just wanted everything to go fair, right up fair. until the date. And he was just like causing obstacles. I didn't need. I like panicked on what to wear. I wore jeans. I was like sweating. I was horrible. But anyway, again, the car when Des finally picks me up, I was just like, Oh my dad's so fucking annoying. And he goes, at least your parents are alive. And from that moment <laughs> on, I was like, this guy's great. <laughs> this guy. And you know what? I respect it because that could have gone badly. I could have been like, what? That's that's not funny. That's sick. That's whatever. We both have a, the same dark, weird sense of humor and and we just kind of hit it off. And I think laughter is just like really important in relationships. And no matter what moods we're in or whatever is going on in our personal lives, I know we'll always make each other laugh. And and that's but that's also me like some people don't care about laughter but that's me <laughs> that's that's yes me too and that that's a baller move by the way that uh, with the joke and uh i also can't believe as i was writing down listening to interviews i have so many questions about tea time because i totally thought it was the uh tea See, like half the interview like, was about what uh flavor tea he likes so we don't really know where to go from here <laughs> <laughs> scone recommendations i mean there's just so much nope he just oh, had to play man. double bogey golf with his friends oh man <laughs> um well what a wonderful and majestic meeting between you and des and i also i noticed th- maybe all my information is wrong now i'm questioning myself mm-hmm. in constant doubt D- does he also speak other languages he does okay he does okay so yeah he He's like, I guess his mind works differently than us because I could barely speak Spanish after taking it for like eight years in school. <laughs> he l- went to Ireland and learned um, Gaelic, which is like the Holy Irish language there, fuck. which is like an ancient language. Like I don't, there's anyway, there's some people speak it, but he learned it and did stand up in it and then got inspired to do a documentary where he goes to China, learns Mandarin, which is a whole nother obstacle and ends it by doing stand up in Mandarin. And okay. which is fascinating to me because I could barely speak English. Uh, I thought, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I thought it was going to be like, yeah, so he then, speaks Spanish and Portuguese, but it's like, <laughs> nope, Gaelic. 
and Mandarin. It is actually the funniest thing because we were we live right next door to Chinatown in New York City. So we were just walking and someone was trying to like haggle us for some bags. And he just turns and like starts ranting in Mandarin to the person. Or like we'll go to a place to get our like like a massage or something and he uh-huh. just starts talking to them and everyone's once is like what are they really talking about are they talking about you in the spa and he's like they're just talking about like their lunch break like they don't give a fuck about you don't worry about it but to see <laughs> their faces when they find out this like blue eyed like six three irish dude is speaking mandarin it gets me every time but sometimes we'll we were at like a bubble tea place and he'll just say something in mandarin to them uh-huh. And they won't even process it because it's oh. like, because it's so quick that he said it in their language that they won't. And then like later on, they'll be like, wait a second. <laughs> so that's pretty entertaining for me until they get into like a long discussion that I'm like sitting there and they're like looking at me and laughing. And I'm like, okay, this isn't fun for me anymore. It's Cause he's like fluent, <laughs> fluent. Um, so oh yeah. my God. That is, that is great. The pros well, and cons of dating a smart person. Yes. Yes, exactly. Oh my God. Well, um, yes, my wife is very smart. I was about to (laughs) say something different. She is so intelligent and I love her so much. (laughs) All right. Well, what, what I was finishing saying with my content is just all my jokes were about single dating fuck boys, you know, figuring out my own insecurities. It was a lot of like me, whose fault is it? Is it society's fault? Is it Disney's fault? And then I have to eventually be like, I did get engaged and kind of laugh at like, just because you have a <laughs> ring on your finger, people think you figured everything out and yeah, yeah. that I've met a retired fuck boy. Um, <laughs> and then I, yeah, I go into kind of, I still have a lot more to delve into with it because it's a fairly new relationship. It's been, we've been together for like a year. <laughs> so... <laughs> It's interesting, but the great part about it is there's no weirdness about making jokes about him. Uh-huh. Where like any other guy I dated when they weren't in comedy, it was always like a big thing. Like, can I say this joke about you? Is it okay? Where we know we're making jokes about each other. <laughs> like, that's just how it is. Um, he likes it. As long as we're both being like kind of truthful, like don't say the person has an opinion that they don't for the punchline. Right. As long as you're being like right. honest about it. Like, like, yeah, don't use the person to look bad to make you look good in the joke. Um, right. Which you never said out loud, but that's just like in my head, what how I feel about jokes. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that's kind of, so it's kind of, I play the like, this is what was happening. And this is what happened. And it works out because people talk about their quarantine. So I basically talk about my quarantine. So I'm not like cheating that bad. So I'm not lying, but I'm not not lying. You know what I mean? <laughs> I do. I do. It's beautiful. And not embellishing. Just uh, putting a yeah. nice comic. I just start off saying when I was single. And then we get to present tense by the end. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, making it like a nice novel. Chapter one. Yes. Single yes. Hannah. It's a story. We're storytelling. Oh, man. Well, I'm buckled in and excited (laughs) and uh, excited for you to come to Phoenix October. Tempe. Yes. Tempe at the Tempe Improv. I'll tell you where. Tempe Improv. Um, I'm so excited because I used to go to Arizona every year for tennis at a tournament in Tucson. The 14s Nationals were there. I'm going to be at the Tempe Improv on Wednesday, October 20th, a one-nighter. Um, nice. but yeah, I, what I remember about Tucson is it was freezing at 8am. We'd go like, I think in the winter freezing at 8am, mm-hmm. you'd mm-hmm. start the match with a coat on. And then in like an hour and a half, you'd be like sweating in 75, 80. So that was fun. Yeah. That's, that's Arizona life. It's mm-hmm. Phoenix as well. Mm-hmm. But anyway, now, now that we've heated up, ready to take our jackets off, we're going to get into mm-hmm. the advice portion of the podcast where we're going to answer mm. some questions. So Great. Hannah, it's been de- delightful so far. Um, <laughs> this, first, this first question, it's uh, found from Reddit from the advice column, and it says, <clears throat> had an accident on an elevator. I was out late last night. My Uber home also took a while. I was holding in my bladder for a while. I was trying to run back to my apartment, unfortunately... As I was heading up, my bladder burst and some urine ran down my shorts. As soon as the elevator opened, I sprinted to my room. I couldn't make it even to my own bathroom and unfortunately finished in my shorts again. Uh, 
At this point, I was entirely miserable. I shouted and just wanted to go to sleep. I know the right thing to do was to go back to the elevator and clean up as soon as it happened. My question is, should I tell management on my own? Has this you ever did. happened to you, Hannah? Have you ever? I mean, everyone's shat themselves before, but I've never peed myself. <laughs> if we're being honest. Very true. Very true. Because yeah. like, because the whole We've like, all. we're farting all day and occasionally you make a mistake. Um, but like, you don't accidentally pee. So this, I mean, this guy, <laughs> I get it, he wants to go to sleep, but Oh, it's uh, to be honest, it depends on the fucking building. It depends on the building. If it's a dirty ass building and there's dogs everywhere, fuck it. But if you're in a nice, if you're in a nice one that has, you know, a lobby and, you know, brick. there may or may not be a gym, there may be exposed brick in the apartments, have some self respect. And I would go and I'd clean it myself. Um, Cause what are you gonna say to the management? Oh, my dog peed. Can you clean it up? That's, that's not okay. I, yeah, I agree. I agree. I, the first thing I would look for is cameras. If there are cameras, then you might there as well go. There are always cameras in elevators. Always. Yeah. I think that's that's a sell, uh, regulatory thing. You got to have them. Probably. And then if the P, I, I like your point too, on like if the P makes the place look better because it looks so <laughs> run down. If it adds some leave shine. It. a splash of color if you will what's also so uh, funny is i thought you were gonna ask me comedy advice questions so i was like okay where's the (laughs) stand-up part of this you're like so he's peeing himself he's peeing himself okay i'm like okay where when does he get to the stage (laughs) and i've never heard this kind of advice of like when to pee before a set (laughs) (laughs) yeah i pissed myself twice and now i have an open mic to go to what do i do (laughs) sorry i should have i should have been more detailed in the brief i'm just kidding oh god that's amazing all right we've got our last question um fan karen sent this one in it's from reddit as well and it says can i get some female perspective on an issue of course over the last year or so i haven't been able to stop thinking about an old friend slash crush i haven't seen her in about 10 years and i don't even know if she's single but i would like to reconnect with her either way if for no other reason than to maybe get her out of my mind so here's where i need some advice i deleted my facebook account due to just not using it anymore so i was thinking of asking her mother who i know still lives in her childhood home if she could pass along my number to her if an old friend you suspected had a crush on you did this how likely are you to reach out if this isn't the way to go please give me any advice you can as i really can't think of any other way to reconnect and i really want to see her smile again also okay what are some good joke writing tips <laughs> okay, Stefan, I'm a critical son of a bitch. Please. But I think this is great. I think that is the most adorable thing I've ever heard in my life. Oh. And I guess I guess it depends on your relationship with your mom, but I personally love my mom and my mom vets most men for me and I will like break up with a guy if my mom tells me to. So if a guy <laughs> reached out to my mom, to say, hey, so-and-so wants to talk to you. It could either go really bad because my mom will be into it or my mom will be like, oh, I hate this fucking guy. He's so annoying, leave him alone. But at least you you know how the mom feels if she supports it or not immediately. Um, that- the only thing I could see it being yeah. negative is being like, why can't you just ask me? And also why doesn't the, why does the guy only have Facebook as social media? That, that worries me. Oh. But I also oh. love a man who doesn't have Instagram, but I don't love that he just had a Facebook. But also I'm not gonna we're not being judgy here. Yeah. I love the mom route. I think because also he doesn't have to be like, oh, I want to like be inside your daughter. Like for all like, it could start as a re- <laughs> it could start as a reconnect. Like, hey, like so and so wants you to hit him up. He'd love to like catch up with you. <laughs> And it sounds like he can't get this girl out of his mind, but it's like, it could also be made up a little in his head. Like, you know how you might want to be excited about a crush. So you literally make up that they were this amazing thing. And then you hang, so like, so I think he should hang out and decide, oh. was it something you kind of fantasized over and filled in the blanks? Um, mm-hmm. And that'll be healthy for him to know <laughs> if it was actually real. Cause when was the last time he fucking hung out with this girl? So, you know, it's, it seems a little bit of a fantasy thing. like 
you want to yes. have a crush on her, but it's not because you actually miss her. I, for a while, was like yeah. kind of crushing on a guy that mm. I hadn't seen in a while. And then I hung out with him and I was like, okay, you made that all up because you were bored. Leave this man alone. So it's like, it's good. Get an education, talk to her. You want to see her. That doesn't hurt. And going through the mom is adorable and respectful. And I love it. That's that's a great perspective. I really like that, Hannah. I've, did you not I've think had, I was going there? I did not. You took you went <laughs> way left. You went all the way to Arkansas instead of Long Island. I was <laughs> like, wow. Sis, what a nice, comfortable country road we're going down. This is great. I, I, I do have to say, I'm thinking about it, and there have been a time or two when my mom has passed me the information of girls that I had seen, uh, not seen, but, but gone to high school with. And I thought that mm -hmm. was, I, I felt very charmed. Uh, and I felt, mm -hmm. I gushed. I also was a little confused cause I was married at that point. So I was like, mom, what are you doing? <laughs> so that was a little weird. Um, but, but it, it's a nice feeling to, to think that somebody's thinking about you, but to your point, Hannah, I think it, it's, that you might be in love with the idea of her or, or liking the idea of her more than the actual her. Yeah, go so. in very like doing research, not like I'm so into this girl. Um, yeah, yeah. I also, yeah. I'm obsessed with, I want to make this app. I'm not going to do it, but I think it would do well of like a dating app, but it's just moms. So it's the moms of people. So the, the moms of girls swipe the guys. <sighs> And if they swipe on a guy they like, they get that guy's mom. And the moms decide, do they think their kids would be good together? So they already have the parents' blessing. Because I just, I grew up in New York where like, it's a lot of moms being like, oh, my son will love you. And like my mom being like, oh, you you like her. What I, so I'm like, why don't you guys just fucking do it together and figure it out? And yeah. And if you trust your moms, because some people, they will listen to whatever their mom says. I do. Moms are always I right. Same, same. Moms, moms are just <laughs> packed with wisdom. I feel so. That's a yep. brilliant yep. idea. I'm, I'm trying to think of a name <laughs> for the app. Um, yo, mama. Uh, 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 yo, mama. <laughs> oh man! Wow, just like that. <laughs> what? Dunzo. What a great line to close this mm -hmm. podcast with, Hannah. Mm -hmm. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for coming on the pod and gracing me with. Thank your you wisdom. for having me. Such a fun convo. Oh, thank you. It was that little swirl of, of voices. <laughs> it was a chorus of, of chocolate and vanilla. Thank you again. Yes. And I also, I wanted to ask, what have you got going on? Where can people follow you? What would you like to plug? Yeah, go to hannahburner.com for all my dates coming up. I'm going to the West Coast. I'm going to be in Florida. I'm going to be in Buffalo. There's just a lot of places that are going to be random. So check it out. And then follow me on all social media at beingburns. And if you like podcasts, listen to my mental health comedy podcast, Burning in Hell, B-E-R-N, it's a pun. And then if you like more pop culture, silly stuff, listen to Giggly Squad. So yeah. Yes, we didn't even we didn't even cover Giggly Squad because we <laughs> wanted you listeners hungry for more. Okay, so yes, it's going to be in the yes. show notes, so you yes. can you can peep on over there for uh, <laughs> for more. Oh man, what an excellent episode with Hannah Burner. Don't you agree? I think you might because you made it all the way through. Thank you so much. Please don't forget if you're in Phoenix, Hannah's going to be here at the Tempe Improv on October 20th. And she's got additional tour dates at hannahburner.com. Link is going to be in the show notes. Don't forget to come see me at the Trash or Treasure show at the House of Comedy Tuesday, October 19th at 730. Link is going to be in the show notes. Don't forget to follow, subscribe, leave a review. And that's it, guys. Keeping it short and sweet gonna go shower and condition these lovely locks i'm thinking about shaving it should i shave the hair i don't know let me know guys anyway you guys stay safe out there and much love big old gooch smooch